A controversial law on transgender medical care signed by the governor, with Indiana already facing a lawsuit. This is a dangerous law. This is a cruel law. There's a harm being done here, and we really felt like something needs to be done. We sit down with the bill's author and break down the legal challenges. Plus, former President Trump charged in Manhattan the unprecedented court proceedings and the implications for 2024. Now on this week's edition of In Focus. Thanks for joining us. We hope you're having a good holiday weekend. I'm Dan Spieler. A lot to cover this week from the response to those deadly and devastating storms across Indiana to the unprecedented arraignment of former President Donald Trump. But we begin with a controversial bill signed into law that would ban certain gender affirming care procedures for transgender minors in our state. The ACLU of Indiana immediately filing a lawsuit on behalf of some parents and children. Statehouse reporter Kristen Eskow has details today. The ACLU filed the lawsuit on behalf of four transgender Hoosiers who would be impacted by this ban. Now, some parents have previously said their families would have to leave Indiana if this law takes effect. The lawmaker is standing by the legislation that he introduced. She worries about getting all health care, not just gender affirming health care. Beth and Nathaniel Clawson say their 10 year old transgender daughter is concerned about the future if Indiana's new limits on gender transitioning care take effect. She would lose access to treatments like puberty blockers and hormone therapy. It's taken a drastic toll on all of our mental health. The Clausens are among four families suing the state to stop the new ban, which starts July 1st. A doctor and health care clinic are also on the lawsuit. Ken Falk of the ACLU says the ban is unconstitutional. Remember, the legislature did not ban the various treatments that are outlined. It only banned it for transgender persons. Advocates argue children are too young to make decisions about gender transition and care and should be limited to counseling services, which would still be allowed. This was really, to me, very common sense policy to help protect kids. Republican State Senator Tyler Johnson, who's also an emergency room physician, defended the new law. How do you respond to the assertions from some folks that this makes Indiana a less welcoming place for transgender people? I don't think that's true at all. I think we've been very compassionate in the discussions and conversations and been very open about those discussions. And um, anybody that knows me knows I, I try to be very thought thoughtful through things and very compassionate about things and, and want to make sure that everybody's welcome. We're just looking to protect kids. IU Health currently provides puberty blockers and hormone therapy to transgender patients under age 18. In a statement earlier, IU Health says it will continue to offer mental health services to those patients after this ban takes effect. From the Indiana State House, I'm Kristen Escow. Kristen, thank you. Some other bills the governor signed that we've been following, including legislation allowing a state takeover of properties where a landlord is behind on utility payments, a proposal restricting local communities from adopting unique election policies, and a change to how the Indiana National Guard handles court martial requests. Also this week, the governor says he is coordinating assistance for the people impacted by the recent tornado outbreak in our state, including the small town of Sullivan, where sadly three people died in this storm. So far, the governor has issued disaster declarations for seven counties, Benton, Johnson, Monroe, Morgan, Owen and Sullivan counties. He says the state is setting up help centers and says he'll request funding from the federal government. I um, have communicated that we will make sure that we are submitting every request that we have. It's amazing to see yet again when tragedy strikes down in Sullivan this past weekend, I ran into a number of people and said, are you going to stay? I hope you stay. I hope you rebuild. We're going to help you. We've been through some floods and tornadoes before, so we know how to do this. We'll do that. If we need help, we'll, we won't be too ashamed to ask for it or too proud. And the state asking for that assistance. Meantime, this week, the other big story out of New York, former President Trump appearing in court to face 34 felony charges tied to hush money that his 2016 campaign paid to several parties before that election. Manhattan's DA claims the case is about holding people accountable. The former president says he believes the charges are politically motivated. We today uphold our solemn responsibility to ensure that everyone stands equal before the law. No amount of money and no amount of power 
changes that enduring American principle. Our justice system has become lawless. They're using it now, in addition to everything else, to win elections. Of course, this all comes as former President Trump runs for the White House again in 2024. Washington correspondent Jesse Turnour explains how this week's events could impact the Republican field. Everything's brand new with Donald Trump. We've never seen anything like this before. 34 felony criminal charges are not slowing down former President Donald Trump's third bid for the White House. He's now using Tuesday's arraignment to raise campaign cash. And political experts like George Washington University's Todd Belt say nothing prohibits him from doing so. We've actually even had somebody run for president from jail. That was Eugene V. Debs back in 1920. Belt says Trump's legal troubles are not hurting his campaign either. Now more than ever, Donald Trump is best positioned to be the nominee. But other Republicans who want to offer voters an alternative option are starting to jump in. Are smelling blood in the water. Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson announced his plan Sunday on ABC This Week. This is one of the most unpredictable political environments that I've seen in my lifetime. Nikki Haley launched her campaign in February and visited the southern border Monday. This will be one of our top priorities. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is also expected to take on Trump. And South Carolina Senator Tim Scott will visit three key battleground states next week. But Belt says these candidates face a big challenge. If more of them get into the race, then more of them are going to be dividing up that non-Trump vote. President Joe Biden is not commenting on the case against Trump and has not officially announced a re-election bid. But Belt says that's strategic. There's a number one rule in politics. When the opponent is doing themselves in, just let them do it. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. And of course, there's also Mike Pence. This week, a spokesperson for the former VP says he will not fight a judge's ruling that compels him to testify in a Justice Department probe, a special prosecutor investigating the efforts by former President Trump and his allies to overturn the 2020 election results, which of course led up to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The judge ordered the former Indiana governor to testify on the events between election night and January 6th, but he will not have to testify about the riot itself. Meantime, Indiana Republican Senator Mike Braun stopped by our studio this week. He spoke about last week's destructive storms, the former president's indictment, and the controversial transgender care bill signed into law at the State House. Our Kristen Eskow now one-on-one -on -one with Senator Mike Braun. All right, we're joined now by Senator Mike Braun. Senator, welcome. Hey, good to be here. So I first wanted to ask you about the devastating tornadoes that swept through Indiana recently. How should the federal government assist? So the state right now is trying to compile all the information. There was damage elsewhere in our state. Illinois is probably doing the same thing for Robinson, and I'm sure they'll make the same submission to get it declared a federal disaster area. So uh, we're going to stay on top of it to make sure it's moving in the right direction. And I think the, our state government's doing everything it can to get it done quickly. And then I hope, you know, it uh, qualifies for the federal disaster aid as well. Do you have any indication yet of a potential timeline for how quickly federal aid could start to come? No, the, the most recent case was probably Arkansas and Little Rock, and that transpired fairly quickly. So hoping here it moves at that same pace. I also wanted to ask you about some other news this past week. The indictment of former President yep. Trump. This legal battle could drag on for months and he's facing investigations in other jurisdictions as well. Are you comfortable with him staying in the presidential race? Well, um, he's going to stay in. Uh, he said that and I think that when you navigate through stuff like this, you're kind of along for the ride. But I think this is cutting even into the middle and some Democrats that have said on this particular charge that came from the uh, prosecuting attorney there in New York that it, uh, of course, has felonies in it, but uh, many have said they wonder, you won't even see it for months in terms of what it's about. It looks like it's going to play, you know, right into possibly the election. So uh, I think you got to be careful when you do something, and if it's a flimsy case, many think it might be, and then it's purely political, and I think it's a sad situation, uh, whichever side of the aisle you look at it from, and I think maybe there's a little more of that general comment on this. Do you think the Republican Party should look to someone other than former President Trump for the nomination? So I think it was fairly clearly. When Trump came along, uh, he represented half the country upset with D.C. business as usual there. 
policies pre-COVID. Uh, I think many uh, are, um, would love to see us back there. No inflation, things working, raising wages in the toughest places we've never been able to without any inflation. I came from the real world of running a business and uh, in the 37 years I ran my little business that ended up becoming a national company. That was the best economy that I was ever a part of. And uh, it's kind of like, gosh, could we get back to that? So do you think President Trump remains the best candidate of the folks who have jumped in the race already or the names that have been floated? So they're all going to have to. I love competition. I mean, I embraced a lot of it when I came out of the real world and ran for Senate. So I think there is a real appetite for a different kind of individual to get into the federal arena. Look at what the career politicians have delivered us over three decades. So the competition that's there, and I'm guessing there's gonna be plenty of it, uh, there are gonna be some that think things were really, really good pre-COVID. And I think for any of them though, they're gonna have to tell us as a country especially the people in the middle that end up electing presidents and the swing state senators, what are you for? I also wanted to ask you about the um, gender care, gender transitioning yes. care ban that the governor signed into law this week, bans anyone under the age of 18 from obtaining certain gender transitioning care procedures, puberty blockers, hormone therapy. Right now, parents can make decisions on that for their children that's being taken away. So how does that align with your advocacy for parents' rights? I think when you're dealing with something like this and when some of the actions are irreversible, you got to be careful. You got to recognize what the kids and the pa parents are going through and they're going to have their point of view. I think until we understand more about it, uh, find out how you can counsel folks that are dealing with it in a way before you get to that point, I think the legislature and the governor did the right thing. All right, Senator Braun there with our Kristen Escow. Coming up, we'll talk much more about President Trump, a big part of our conversation with the panel today, how they think the former president's indictment will impact the 2024 campaign and other races all across the country. That's next.